We are joined now by the Foreign Minister of Ukraine, Dmitry Kuleba. Mr. Minister, thank you for joining us this morning. Just give us a sense of what's happening on the ground there in Ukraine this morning. The war goes on. We uh, heroically repel attacks uh, of uh, the Russian armed, armed forces on the ground. However, we do have issues with the skies and uh, the Russian Air Force dominates in the skies and continues bombing our cities and killing many civilians. So you and, and I know that the president has called for a no-fly zone. Do you understand why President Biden and other Western leaders have, have rejected that request? There's a concern in the words of one American senator that would lead to World War III. Well, we believe that the rejection of the idea of the no-fly zone is based on the lack of confidence in the strengths of NATO as an alliance, because uh, the military might of NATO is uncomparably bigger uh, compared to Russia. So why would Russia dare to shoot down a NATO, a NATO plane, knowing that it is doomed, eventually doomed, if the war with NATO begins? If you adopt this logic, then no fly zone becomes possible. If you, are, if you believe that you cannot stop Russia, then no-fly zone becomes impossible, but then also the chance to defend NATO vanishes, because if you do not believe that you cannot stop uh, Russia in Ukraine, why should you be able to stop it elsewhere? It does appear that the U.S. is prepared to facilitate the transfer of fighter jets to Ukraine. They would give, uh, Poland would give you fighter jets, the United States would replace those. What difference will that make? What more do you need? Well, the decisions, uh, the necessary decisions haven't been made yet. So I urge both the United States and Poland to speed up all the decision-making processes and procedures. If we receive uh, fighting jets, that will allow us to reestablish control over the sky and save many, many civilian lives, as well as many uh, houses, buildings, and objects of critical infrastructure from being distracted by Russian bombardments. I know there are ceasefire talks set to begin again today. Do you believe a stable ceasefire is possible right now? I'm a diplomat. I have to believe in diplomacy and in the ceasefire. We will be working hard. Uh, on achieving that, but I have to admit that during we uh, during the previous uh, round, two rounds of talks, there was no correlation between holding negotiations and the intensity of fire on the ground. For Russia, holding the talks is not a reason to put uh, to put fire on hold. You say you're a diplomat. What is the groundwork for a long-term? settlement here. Do you believe one is possible at this point? Or are we in for a bloody stalemate that could go on for months, even years? Well, all wars end with peace. And since the reason of this war is the fact that President Putin rejects the right of the Ukraine to exist as a sovereign nation and our identity, we will continue to fiercely and vigorously fight against him as aggressor until we prevail. This is the strategy. We have no other strategy but to win because our own existence as a nation is at stake. What's it going to take to stop Putin? Um, sanctions, losses in Ukraine, and uh, uh, full isolation. Mr. Minister, thank you for your time this morning. Stay safe. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.